Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis suspended Tampa's top elected prosecutor. The governor says he removed state attorney Andrew Warren from office for, quote, neglect of duty and incompetence, unquote. Now, that neglect appears to be a letter that Warren signed, along with 83 prosecutors nationwide, pledging not to prosecute anyone who seeks, provides, or supports an abortion. And I don't think the people of Hillsborough County want to have an agenda that is basically a woke, where you're deciding that your view of social justice means certain laws shouldn't be enforced. I'm joined now by the man elected twice by the people of the county just named by that governor, Hillsborough County, Andrew Warren. Good to see you, Andrew, although I'm, I'm certain that you have quite the reaction to what has happened today. I want to just ask this question, though, because I think that people might not fully understand what's happened today. Were you presented with a case where you were told or had the opportunity to prosecute somebody who was seeking, providing, or some way helping to acquire an abortion, and you refused to prosecute? Or this was a hypothetical that you were released on? <laughs> well, you'll have to ask the governor. I mean, I certainly wasn't presented with any case. And this just shows how flagrant this overreach is. This is a blatant violation of the most fundamental principles in our democracy, that the people get to elect their leaders. That's how democracy works. Even my eight-year-old understands that. Well, you know, you and I are both prosecutors, um, and I certainly understand the idea of prosecutorial, prosecutorial discretion. And there are choices made all of the time about whether to pursue cases, whether to not pursue cases. This is really part of the job and part of, I assume, why one would elect somebody to be a prosecutor as well. And so in that instance, based on that, why would this be a dereliction or a neglect of duty for you not to, or for you to decide how to wield your discretion? It's not. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's not a dereliction of duty. In fact, it's not even talking about things that I've done in the office. It's talking about things that I may do in the future for a law that doesn't even exist yet. I mean, this is out of like 1984 Orwellian thought police. I've said that if a law was passed like this, then I would make sure we use our resources to do what the people elected me to do, keep our neighborhoods safe, promote justice and fairness. The government, the governor's just grasping at straws here. He's not caring about what's best for the people of Hillsborough. He's caring about his presidential ambitions. Now, based on the caveat you just gave, though, let me just push back for a second, because you did sign a letter that essentially said, look, I'm, I'm not going to prosecute a case like this without having a case before you, without having a specific fact pattern to talk about. You did say if that law was passed, you then would not do something to prosecute. Why would that be excusable if a prosecutor's job was to enforce the laws as written? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. It's a, it's a great question because I put my hand on the Bible and I swore to uphold the U.S. and the state constitutions. And at the time I signed that, Roe v. Wade was still the law of the land under the U.S. Constitution. And the Florida Constitution has an express right to privacy. The law that the governor is mad at me for saying I won't enforce, which by the way, I said I would look at on a case by case basis, is a law that's unconstitutional, that's already been held unconstitutional by the first court to look at it. I want to play what Governor Sanders had to say, because he actually touched on that very notion of the idea of not looking at a case by case basis. Here he is. We are going to make sure that our laws are enforced uh, and that no individual prosecutor puts himself above the law. Yes, you can exercise discretion in an individual case, but that discretion has to be individualized and case specific. You can't just say you're not going to do uh, certain offenses. So that's not what you were doing, you're saying. By signing that letter, it was still Roe v. Wade you were referencing, and you do still intend, should you be in that position, to actually look at a case-by-case -case basis. Is that right? Yes, and I've said this from the beginning when we were talking about the abortion law, that even though there's a right to privacy in Florida, and even though the law that the legislature passed is unconstitutional, if we put those things aside for a moment, if a case comes to me, we exercise our discretion under the new law as we would under the old law. There's a big difference between a Tampa General Hospital doctor providing abortion at 24 weeks versus a back alley abortion at 37 weeks. 
And any good prosecutor who's following the law will look at the facts of the case and the law before making a charging decision. Again, the governor's just upset because I'm not kowtowing to his agenda. I'm the one upholding the law here. On abortion, the law is clear in Florida. That 15-week ban is unconstitutional, and I said I'm not going to enforce it. So are you, I mean, I know that you have been suspended. Is there, what is your thought on the anticipation of possibly being reinstated by the Florida State Senate? I mean, they don't actually come back into session, I think, until March. Do you intend to go back to work tomorrow, nonetheless? I'm going to continue doing what the Hillsborough County citizens elected me to do, which is keep our neighborhood safe and promote fairness and justice and the rule of law. I've done that every day for the past five and a half years, and I'm not going to stop now. The reality is that the governor can sign some order in his pen or in his crayon, and it doesn't change what the voters elected me to do, which is to serve this community to the best of my ability. Well, it looks like it'll be a very interesting morning tomorrow in your office. Mona Andrew Warren, thank you for being a part of the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Look, the context is as clear as the latest Republican polling, by the way. I mean, Governor DeSantis is the only Republican besides Donald Trump with double-digit support for the 2024 nomination. I mean, look at that. It's an inverse, 43-34. Look, I can do math, everyone. I called it an inverse. <laughs> Why is everyone laughing? Of course I can do math. What are you talking about? Excuse you all. Let's discuss that with Scott Jennings, Abby Finkenauer, and David Swerlick. I get it. Only lawyers really, really bill people. They don't do the math. But listen, what do you make of the idea? I mean, Governor DeSantis essentially has somebody suspended and basically escorted out of the building because he won't eventually look at a case in his mind, case by case, and doesn't want to, it doesn't intend to follow what the Supreme Court says he's supposed to follow or not follow. What's your thought? Two takeaways, Laura. Number one, uh, that Governor DeSantis used the word woke in that speech very intentionally. If there's a 2024 Republican presidential primary, being tough on wokeness will be just as important as being tough on crime or being tough on China. I think a lot of the things that Governor DeSantis does going forward have to be looked at through that prism of a potential presidential race. One more quick point. Yeah. All my life, most of my life, Republicans have said the government that governs best is the government that's closest to the people. That would be the voters of Hillsborough County and their district attorney. If they don't like him, they think he's too woke, they can vote him out in 2024. But apparently now the idea is it should come from Tallahassee or from Washington. I mean, just the thought here, I mean, the umbrella of wokeness is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. For I mean, woke just seems to be anything that is not what the governor wants, right? That's not, the, that's not actually the criteria for wokeness, is it? I don't want to, Scott Jennings, how do you, how do you define woke? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll just give you a macro view. That there are Republicans all over this country who are quite concerned about a growing number of liberal prosecutors who seem to be more interested in their own personal ideological agenda than they are in prosecuting the laws. He's not the only prosecutor who's elected uh, around the country who has said, I won't do certain kinds of prosecutions. Now, DeSantis made an aggressive move here. And of course, everybody's going to you know, freak out about it. But this, this is... Just to give you raw political analysis, this is his instinct that has put him up where he, we showed him on the polling, mm -hmm. finding a way to provoke a reaction that gets him the enemies that you need in a potential Republican primary mm -hmm. to rise. And he's done it time and again. He did it with Disney. You know, he's, he's, he has done it over and over again. So it, one of the reasons he is sitting at the top of the non-Trump heap is because he, he does have an instinct to perceive these opportunities, and then to aggressively act on them, which is something, you know, Republican voters are, are looking for out of their national candidates. Yeah, I mean, with the overturning of Roe, we knew, I mean, that night that we were going to see governors across the country in these red states just tripping over themselves, trying to get further to the right of the next one because they want headlines and they want to make a name for themselves. But what we're talking about here, too, and I, I hope we don't get lost on this, He's upset that an attorney might not prosecute or criminalize a doctor or a woman seeking an abortion. I mean, that is what we're talking about here. That is where we are right now in the United States of America, the state of Florida, right? I mean, it is horrifying that we're even having this discussion, that we're talking about criminalizing abortion, but that is where we're at right now. And he might win a Republican primary, but he better be paying attention to what just happened in Kansas.